Hi, I'm DJ Dino from Jinx the Games, and this tutorial is about how to store in-game statistics using XML, Data Maker, and hash tables. But first, I would like to tell you why it has been a while that I have made some tutorial videos, and the reason is this. We are working more than full time on this 2D platformer and we want to have an alpha version ready at the beginning of 2020. The game is called Darklight and has a Steam page up and running. I command you to have a look at it and add it to your wishlist right now. And I will add a link to the description below. Now let's get started. The first thing I'm doing here is this singleton manager and this don't destroy on load. Don't destroy on load will make sure that this stays alive even when we change to a different scene and this scene would be unloaded. Then singleton manager will make sure that only one instance of this object will exist. So if I go to a different scene and come back to this scene the one from the scene will be destroyed and this one will stay alive. And that's important because else some stats data could be uh, incorrect. Then I have my XML select nodes and I have here my XML file and I'm going to search for this category list. And let me show you the file here. Then we have here this category list and we have three of them and the first category is player stats, then weapons dropped and environment. Then we have our stats. So we have stat name player field, uh, sorry, player died. And then we have a type set and type is int. And then we have the value. And so for the next one also type int and we have here a player has had type bool. Uh, this type could actually be anything what you want. So you don't have to set this bool, you can set whatever you want. I will show you in a minute. So in here I'm gonna get also the node count. So I want to know how many categories there are. Then I have this found event, not found and error event. It's important to use this not found and error event. So you can easily find issues uh, when something is not found or errors. So you just add here a global transition to a, to an empty state and uh, just add this breakpoint by right clicking and toggle breakpoint. And then if not found, it will pause the game. And if error, it will also pause the game. And when it's paused, you can press on the previous button and then you can see from where it went wrong. And that will be more easier for you to find uh, the issues. So always use this. Uh, I'm storing this result here and then i can use that later on and then i have my iterate and this is to loop through so we have the start index one and then the category count uh, sorry category count and uh, so that is three so we will loop three times and then it will do the finished event and uh, let me play this quick and show you in here so this proxy actually is not needed it's just for to show you uh, the data so when i loop this uh, here we can see what it got and uh, also this hash table proxy here without the reference is only there because else um, the actions that are in here are complaining that there is no hash table on it. So I just put a, like a dummy hash table on it. So as you could see here, there is a, a hash table created when I loop again, 
the second one is created and when i loop again the third one is created and as you can see player stats weapons dropped and environment and let's go through this now so the first thing here is get category so we have here our use variable and then with the result and with the result we're gonna look for this category and uh, we have here the expat query with this uh, underscore zero underscore and there we use the current index which we get here from the iterate and so we know which one the first the second or the third one we want to get so that's the way we can get the correct uh, categories then i do have this uh, in a result two and we have one property that we're gonna uh, store and that's the category at category and so at category is this category in, uh, in here and then again we have the found not found an error always use these then once we have this we can create a hash table from this uh, here is this XML save and proxy. This is just to show you in here. So that's not needed. Uh, so later on you can uh, remove these components and this action. Then we have the hash table create and we're going to create the hash table with the category as a reference. Uh, also again here we have uh, an error that we can use so uh, if already exists it will give an error and also we have this array add and we're going to add the category to this uh, categories array and uh, this is to use later on to save and load um, I will show you in a minute for that then we're going to get the stats from that category so um, we have a reset here and that's just for this get next node list properties just to be sure that it's reset and start from zero and then we have this xml select nodes and um, so we have the result two here with the use variable and we're going to search for stat so stat will be these and then uh, on the first one we will have one two three four five and here only one for each but um yeah we don't need to count i guess uh i'm then i'm storing this result tree and we have this store reference i'm not sure which one i'm using now we'll see in a second and the note count i have here but i don't think we're gonna need those but again here found not found an error and once we've got this uh, we'll go here and then loop through each stat so yeah you see here I use actually the stat ref and I'm not using this XML result so this one you could leave empty if you wish uh, anyway then I have my reset flag so that it to be sure that it starts from the first one and my loop event next and done this is similar to iterate and like array get next and stuff the index i don't need so i'm not saving that and i'm going to get three properties so i'm going to get the add name and add time and also the name as value so add name will give me this then add type will give me this and then actually the name will give me the value here so these three i'm getting here then after i've got this i go to the string switch and here i'm gonna check the type so the type which i get here from here int bool and other things which you wish what you want to use so i have here int bool string float but you could have any other type of names 
and then do something else with it. That's uh, up to you on how you want to use it. So when we have an int value, so for example here, the chest open int from the last one. So that would be an int, then it will go here. And I have to convert string to int because the hash table add uh, doesn't have this auto convert like with the, with the standard actions. So I'm not sure uh, why, but uh, yeah, for now you'll need to convert. Probably that will be updated later. Uh, anyway, so um, I have my value here. So let's look back here. So I am saving here this value and uh, uh, I'm gonna change that to an int value and then I'm gonna do this hash table add and I'm gonna use the category and then for the key I use the stat name so that's what I get here with the add name stat name and then I set the type int and the int value and then I add that is saved or added to the hash table and then I go back for the next one it loops again and if it's a bool it goes here and convert string to bool and then hash table add and also category stat name bool and the bool value and then the string we have just a direct a string we don't need to convert string to string so and then we have for a float also again string to float and hash table add so in here i can show you here you have the total diamonds player died enemies killed player has had and total gold and you can see here that you can have different kind of types actually actually in a single hash table which is very convenient uh, only if you want to put manual uh, in a hash table, then you can only set one type and only later on you can still add uh, different types. But uh, yeah, for manual, you can place only one type. Uh, so it's actually better to do things like this in runtime. So uh, we've looped through them. And you can see we have each category and also each uh, here baby gun and then we have the chest opened so everything is there then this part is to save but uh, I'm using easy save here as it has a direct save for the hash tables and um, uh, the player prefs and uh, are quite limited in saving different kinds or different types so um, you could try to save it but then you need to uh, look for each type and then um, then save per type so personally uh, I like a lot more to use easy save and I think easy save is still the best uh, save asset that you can get on the asset store. I use it actually on all, actually on all projects where I need to save something. I'm using Easy Save. It's just that good. So, yeah. If you have a different save file, a uh, save asset, you can also make your own system here. But in this case, it's with Easy Save. So first thing I do here is this reset, and um, this is because I use this array get next and um, I want to make sure that it starts from the beginning. And uh, so we have our categories here and we're going to store this in the category. Then we're going to see if this key exists. So if that category exists, then if it doesn't exist, we're going to save this and uh, because uh, yeah, with easy save, you always need to save it the first time, uh, else you don't, uh, you cannot load, uh, you will get errors and stuff, so that's important. And so, uh, if it's already existing, then we're gonna load it, 
and we're gonna use also the reference from the category and also the key we're gonna use category and that's the easiest way so we have separated files actually for saving and uh, an advantage in this way also is um, later on if you want to add more stats you could make a new uh, a new category and then for that category you can uh, you can just continue and add more stats and um, without uh, endangering that you lose some of the old stats so you can add new stats on it that's uh, the main thing and that's uh, how i use it uh yeah well, let's loop through this so that's done then i have here this global event and that's just to save so now i'm just looping through all the all the categories and just save them and then when it's done just idle here uh, you could make separated uh, stats for or saves for each category if you wish and that's all depends on your game and how you want to use it so now let's go to this sample here and in here you can see we have has hat and in here we have this bull test and this hash table bull test will uh, test if the player has had is true or false so that's going to be in here and as you can see for now it's false so when i alt and click this you can see that uh, it goes to no uh, when you have a global uh, transition you can alt click on objects i don't know on 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 mac if that's also the same if you have alt click but uh, there should be a button also that you can press and then you can uh, trigger this. So now it's no. And then we have this uh, get hat here. And this has this has table, uh, hash table set. And um, then the stats data and player stats as a reference. And then player as hat type bool and set the value to true so let's do this alt click and now it should be set to true and here we go so now when i check again so in here also i have this stats data uh, variable to connect to here and then the reference player stats and player has had and also the keynote found event is important to use this if the if there is some issues so always use that again and uh, so if it's true now it should go to yes and here we go it's it's true now so we have a hat yay -hey. okay so that's about it um now i'm usually uh I use this as a global because that's I'm going to use in almost all the scenes. So what I'm doing here inside the start is also to um, use this uh, get owner and then have a global. Well, I have already one now because I made it already. So you just make a global here, stats data and then um, it's easier to communicate directly with that global variable uh, i always try to minimize using uh, globals but in this case because in almost all scenes and everything i want to use stats so then it's good to use that and so we can just use the globals here and uh, then it's a lot easier to communicate with that so yeah i hope this is uh, very helpful for you thank you for watching if you like the tutorial please like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel you can support my work by becoming a patron at patreon or donate me with paypal or purchase my assets on the asset store 
You can find the links in the descriptions below.